So we had a presentation in the New Drugs on the Horizon session for our CDK9 uh, kinase inhibitor AZD4573. Um, this is part of our cell death portfolio. Um, you may be aware that Venetoclax has already got approval now in, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. That's a selective BCL2 inhibitor. Um, so that gives clinical validation to the principle that you can buy um, targeting um, proteins in the apoptotic um, family, you can trigger cell death and enhance um, therapies. So there are other members of that family, um, one of which is MCL1, and we've got two different mechanisms of targeting MCL1. We have a direct inhibitor, it's a D5991, and the drug we were talking about today is the CDK9 inhibitor. And the way that that works is it inhibits um, the, the phosphorylation of phosphoserine 2 on RNA polymerase, so it basically inhibits transcription. So we've designed a short-acting um, CDK9 inhibitor that produces short inhibition of, of transcription for a few hours, um, dosed intermittently, and that showed activity in particularly hematologic um, malignancies. And we've also shown that by combining with our BTK inhibitor, a calibrutinib, you can basically prime some of these cells for cell death, and then when you come in with a CDK9 inhibitor, you can enhance the level of activity that, you, that, that you've seen. Um, and so we've, we've seen prolonged and durable complete remissions for the combination of the CDK9 inhibitor and a calibrutinib. So there are other mechanisms as well um, of uh, enhancing the activity you can see for calibrutinib in B-cell um, malignancies. And another one that we've got a poster on today is the combination of our ATR inhibitor, AZD6738, with a calibrutinib. Now, that combination also enhances the level of cell kill, but does it by a different mechanism. Um, so ATR um, is, a, is part of our uh, DNA damage response portfolio. Uh, by inhibiting ATR, you inhibit the ability for cells to repair um, uh, DNA, um, because what you do is you get um, separation of the, um, the, the DNA helicase that unwraps DNA and the polymerase that is uh, polymerizing behind it, so you get potential for conversion of single strand breaks into double strand breaks. So by combining the ATR inhibitor with a calibrutinib, particularly in subsets of hematologic malignancies perhaps that have either uh, got other impairments in DNA damage repair, so for example if you've got uh, ATM loss, well, it might be one example, P53 mutation is another, um, you may sensitize those cells to um, uh, increased level of DNA damage and that triggers cell death. And what we've shown in the poster in diffuse cell, cell and firma models is that you can enhance the activity by putting these two drugs together. And we've now got a clinical trial ongoing in hematologic malignancies looking at the combination of our ATR inhibitor and the calibrutinib. So I think one of the challenges in diffuse large B cell lymphoma is it's quite a heterogeneous disease. Um, and the two mechanisms I've talk, talked about may be important in different subsegments of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So I think what's starting to happen is you're starting to see sequencing of patients' um, tumours and identif identification of the different mechanisms that are driving the tumour. Um, so one of the things we're doing is we're actually getting a platform-based study called the PRISM trial, which will... Um, use molecular sequencing to select subgroups and look at different combinations with the different subgroups within diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Because beyond the drugs I've talked about today, we have others that might be relevant in that, in that setting. Um, and I think that mechanism of a platform-based study will enable us to work out which combinations are working well in which patient subgroups. And then we can um, you know, do the most appropriate late-phase development um, programs for the ones that are looking promising.